I am here to give you a little bit of an update on this guppy patio pond that I set up about five weeks ago. I have not topped this up in about four weeks, I would say, about three or four weeks. And it is just getting to a point now where it's about to get to where the filter is. So I really need to top this up. I like to keep things as real as possible. I think that helps too to give you as a viewer a bit of an idea of what it's like having something like this when you've got a busy schedule. This looked really nice. I'm really happy with how it looked, but at one point something funky happened where it just started to have less water in it. I don't know if some air got in there somehow or whatever. I just let it go in the end. So we need to fix that. I'm gonna just see how I feel about it. I mean, it could be something that you could just put on for special occasions. Say if you're having guests over or something and you wanna be able to see the fish, then you might add this. The fish seem to just naturally enjoy swimming up into it because I think the water in this is warmer than the water in there and it just attracts them into it. It's gonna be handy anyway, because we can just take this out then and we can see exactly what we've got. I can see a few different guppies in there. So I would have had about 15 guppies in there. I can definitely see three at the moment. I can see four actually. They're definitely living and surviving in there. Because I've got plants in here and they're such tiny fish in a volume of 100 litres of water, that's why I haven't really needed to worry too much about water changes and stuff. I'm kind of just letting this system establish itself with the filter in there. Let me know what you think about the aquarium high rise. Do you think it is a feature that's worthwhile putting back in there or not? Comment down below what you think. What I do want to do today is I want to go and get some more fish from that aquariums to actually add into this, depending on how many guppies I could find in here. If I was finding that they were all getting eaten, um, maybe adding some native fish that are going to be a little bit faster and blend in better. Let's just go to Mad Aquariums and see what they've got and maybe we can make a decision when we're there. Let's get into the video and let's get this all sorted out. This hose that I have here, uh, I actually cleaned my car. The problem with that is that I moved my hose out to the front to do that and now I can't get it back on here for some reason. Could have sworn that when I first put this on, I literally just pushed it up and it connected. If there's any hose experts out there, can you please tell me, am I missing a part for this? Because I do not know what has gone wrong. So this is just a hose I have connected to my kitchen sink. Layla, Layla, I don't know if this is actually gonna reach. Oh my gosh, it's gonna reach. <laughs> it just reaches, it literally just reaches. It's summer here in Australia at the moment, so the ambient temperature is normally around like at least 26 degrees. So I'm not worrying about a heat adjust yet, but it will be something I'll probably have to consider adding in later on if I want to keep tropical species, depending on how hardy the guppies are. I really do like the look of this, even when it doesn't have the high rise in it. Once we add some fish, then I will probably put it back in just so we can show the fish off a little bit. Now, there is one thing that I thought of. I was looking at the Tanganyikan tank and I noticed something. You can see all of this green stuff along here. So that is cyanobacteria. It thrives off high light. So if you've got bright lights or sunlight hitting the tank, then it likes to go a bit crazy. And the other thing as well is that once it gets in there, it's very hard to get rid of because it's a bacteria. So you have to get a treatment and the treatment is unfortunately really expensive because it's gonna take me a whole bottle, maybe two, I think, to treat this tank. To me, it looks fine. It can get a little bit crazier than this, but the thing that bothers me the most at a fish tank is if if the fish are unhealthy or if I'm trying to grow plants and they're unhealthy but when it comes to like algae and stuff like that it really does not bother me too much but I still think while we're there we may as well get that. I've said that a couple of times with buffer. Got that little bottle of buffer there. I have this big bottle of this Malawi buffer here, which is pretty full. And then I've got this one that's like a little bit empty. So I must just keep being like, I need buffer and then buying an extra one. So I've got like a million bottles. Just had lunch. It's almost 3 p.m. in the afternoon here. So we've still got plenty of time. They don't close until six. I'm gonna go put petrol in my car have a coffee and we'll make our way to Mad Aquariums and we'll have a look at some of the scapes that they've got there and we'll see what fish we can get to add to our little guppy pond out there. Look at this little fish here, they're so cute. I love this tank. And I love you guys too, it's just a phase right now. I'm just, I'm really into my Tanganyika cichlids right now. Alrighty, so we're now at Mad Aquariums in Logan, Brisbane, Australia. This, I've had a look around and it is amazing. The store is in immaculate condition right now. This is where you enter. You come in through the door here and then you're greeted by this huge fish tank. And they've had it here for ages. This giant karami just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's bigger every time I come in and see it. So the tank itself is 2,160 litres. Okay. And then for some, 
The sump is a six by two by eighteen. A six foot sump. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Excuse the so it's six two foot wide and then um, eighteen inches high. Yeah. Wow. We've had this tank now for about four years. Four years. Total, wow. What is your giant garami's name again? So that's Ed. That's Ed? Oh, I thought it was yeah. Bertha for some reason. I don't know where I got that from. No, that's Ed. Ed's okay, uh, Ed. 14 years old. 14. Yeah, he's actually coming up to his birthday. His birthday's on the 25th of February. Aww. And he will be 15 years of age. Oh my gosh. I think I wished him birthday last year, actually. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> his girlfriend, Chicken. Oh, that's his girlfriend now? Yeah, it's his girlfriend, <laughs> Chicken. And chicken. She's, She's uh, just uh, just under, I think, or just over two. Oh, really oh wow, a bit of an age gap. Uh, yeah, he's just great. <laughs> Why is her name Chicken? My daughter's named her Chicken. Okay, Fanny, because she looks like raw chicken or something, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wanted to go with Chicken Nugget, and they said it's got to be a little bit It's got to be a bit that, simpler. They're like, Chicken. Oh, okay, okay. It weirdly suits her, actually. Would have preferred Nugget, but yeah, oh, yeah. Chicken's good. These fish, are these parrot? No, not parrot fish. They're the marbled red devils. Red devils, that's it. Um, marbled red devils, but the um, the actual devils, like this one was born in the tank. Aww. Um, and there's another one somewhere, but yeah, the red devils, I think they're doing something in the corner over there. He likes to play. Is it? <laughs> but that is really funny. How cute. Sometimes we get people saying that you've got a dead fish. Oh my gosh. But it's just him being a clown. That is so funny. So that fish there is like a clown loach, but blue. Technically, it's wow. a bogey. That is very cool. And clown loaches are the bodia family as well. So uh -huh. it's part it's part of the same family. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, you don't see them very often at all. So there you go. That's a little bit of information about this awesome 2,000 litre something, however many gallons. I'll put it up, the conversion for you guys in America. But let's keep going. And there's so much more to see in the store. This was my original inspiration for my tank at home, for my six foot one. They did used to have a little bit more holy rock in there, but it is just such a beautiful tank. I love it. They've got all of their aquascaping stuff in here and they are potentially going to be having someone from America come and do some aquascaping too in not too long. It's not announced yet the date but I will let you guys know once I know when that is. But that should be really fun if you're local or in the area and want to check it out. But I reckon let's have a look at some of these beautiful scapes. Jack, the owner of Mad Aquariums and Kai who is working here today as well, he does a lot of the scapes with Jack. So between the two of them they've done all of these and then they've got someone who helps to maintain them, cleaning algae off and everything, who is clearly doing a wonderful job. I have never seen a carpeting scape like this and had a look at it and can't see a single shred of algae on a single leaf of all of this Monte Carlo or uh, Baby Tears, whichever carpeting plant it is. Like when I saw this, I was just mind blown. It's so beautiful. So that's the plant that's in there. So HQ Cuba or something, I think it's HC H Cuba. H HC Cuba. And so they've got a really nice thick carpet of that plant in here. They didn't want to get bright colored shrimp, like cherry shrimp or yellow shrimp in here because they didn't want that to be what you paid attention to when you look at this. And it is so true because when you see this, it's like just seeing beautiful green rolling hills and it really makes the plant and the scape stand out. Whereas if you had lots of little dots of shrimp, even though shrimp can look beautiful, I do think it would take away from this simplistic look where it's all about the scape and the neon tetras that you can see schooling in here. When you're doing a beautiful planted scape like this, having a brimless tank just helps you be able to actually get big pieces of rock in there. Pendant lights look really nice on a brimless tank, especially when you don't have fish that jump and you don't need to have netted lids like what I do. And I have three minutes of memory space left on my camera, so let me just delete some old footage. Alrighty, I just deleted some footage so let's keep going sorry about that I need to in the future make sure I delete my footage before I come to a place like this but let me just quickly then show you these tanks we'll do like a little bit of this speed run through them so I've got this beautiful one again with a bioscape pendant light as well so it's got plenty of plants in there what you'll see here as well I believe all of these have co2 oh yeah you can see the co2 coming out here but you can see it really clearly with this planted tank here 
with all the CO2 diffusing into it. Jack was just telling me that this tank here, actually, they just sold it and it's going to be getting picked up, I think, at the end of the month. So what they do now is actually this whole take-home display thing. So you can actually buy this entire scape as well as the tank. And everything in it except for the CO2, I think you've just got to set that up yourself. Some really nice Java fern, I believe that is there. They've got, look at this gorgeous vowel that they've got growing on there with some native fish like rainbow fish. I love this tank. It's got some tenons in it, giving it that nice kind of brownie river look. And some beautiful monos, which are like a brackish type of fish. They kind of remind me of angelfish a little bit. And you can see the beautiful zebra plecos too, which I wonder if might be even from AB, who has his channel, Adrian's Fish Room now. We've got a bunch of um, other little displays here that are just in the process of being set up. Comment down below and let me know if you'd like to see a full store tour of this place. They've got these beautiful goldfish here. They've redone this African cichlid tank and it's just looking absolutely beautiful. All of the Mbuna here are quite small, so they're gonna do a lot of growing. I love these Travasse, these scraper mouth Mbuna. Beautiful little fish, so cute. They've got a blue zebra in here, electric yellows. Got a hongi cichlid, really nice little range. And I like the round rock look in here. It's gonna look really beautiful. It looks beautiful already, but once these guys start to grow a little bit bigger, that is really gonna pop. There's also all of these bedders on here, and they've got the most huge display of fish are buying. It's like a whole African cichlid wall here. They've got South American cichlids here. So this store is clearly very amazing, and we could spend a lot longer in here. I've already been here for way too long before I started filming this. I've had a look, and there's some white cloud fish that I'm thinking of getting. And just because the range of guppies is not extensive right now here, I thought, let's try it out. I might even get some mollies even, just to kind of compare, do a little bit of trial and error and see what fish do best in there, what looks the best. So then you as an audience as well, if you want to set up something similar, you can see and come along on that journey with me. Got our white cloud minnows down here. And I was looking at this yabby and I was like, he looks really cool. Maybe I'll get a yabby. And then I read the name, yabby destructor. Alrighty, so we're gonna get some mollies. They only, I really like the speckled ones, but they only have them in balloon version. We're gonna get two orange ones just to match the speckled ones. And then we'll get two speckled balloon mollies as well. So we can see how they fare in the tank. I was debating getting just the normal orange ones, but I just think they look so weird with the balloon one. So let's just hope since they're mollies, and they're live bearers, maybe they'll do well and be hardy. The orange one there with the black speckles, that's your boy. Okay. And then those, uh, the other three are your girls. Now, you, to tell them apart, the bottom of the male, you see like a spike under his belly. Okay. Whereas the females don't have a spike, they have an extra fin down the bottom. Right. In the back. So if you see this Y one right here at the glass, how it's got that, that elongated spike under its belly, mm -hmm. that's its reproductive system. And then your females don't have that spike, they've just got an extra fin at the back. Interesting. Okay, so I've got one male, three girls. Yeah, which is like the perfect ratio, really. Okay, cool. Now we get our little minnows out. So I know it's going to look a little bit weird with a mix of mollies and guppies and minnows, but I think it'll be interesting just to see which fish does the best and how they fare. But maybe when we put them in there, it'll look really cool. That little fella is going to be a long fin. Okay, cool. But why not to look it's a bit older? So I might have a long fin minnow in there. We are all done. We're gonna head home and add these guys to the pond. And I didn't forget, surprisingly, my cyanobacteria treatment as well. It's a red cyano one for a reef tank, but he said it's gonna work just fine for the green cyanobacteria. Maybe a little bit better than the last one I used, which didn't quite get rid of it all, unfortunately. I will see you when we get home. Alrighty. Oops. Okay, let's let these guys float in here. What I'm gonna do is let's clean this up, get this popped in. No, this is not worth it. Okay, so we need to get all the air out. It's not going to. I've really messed it up because it's all murky now too. The issue is fighting with the water volume constantly that is going lower when I'm trying to put that in and then trying to keep it under so the air can't get under the aquarium. And so I'm keen to try this again 
but I reckon we need a stand that is a little bit lower to try it with and maybe a, like a high rise that's a little bit shorter I'm thinking so I'm gonna keep my eye out for that and maybe do that instead okay so I ended up persisting and I managed to get this in this is not a look right now with all this murky water so I'm gonna do my best to put a thumbnail together that makes it look a little bit nicer but it's still the real deal it just needs time to have all these particles go away so let's just see how it goes one of our copies is like yay I've got my high rise back okay he went into the fog but there was one in there I swear our little balloon mollies first so I've got four of our balloon mollies we've got the two orange ones and the two polka dot ones now I'm not overly concerned about this tank or this pond because it's just a kind of fun trial and error pond it's just guppies and stuff so I'm just just adding stuff in. All right, we'll add our, our minnow fish, cloud minnows as well. Let's add these guys in. Let's lift this up a little bit. I can already see one of the cloud minnows just went in, just went up here. Okay, that's really cool to see. So apologies for the murkiness. I just didn't think ahead and I didn't expect it to get this murky, trying to put this back on. So my bad. Hopefully you still enjoyed this video and seeing the process of going out and choosing these fish and seeing a bit of mad aquariums again too. Uh, Hopefully you don't mind that it's murky. I will definitely, absolutely, I really want to get into posting some more shorts. So give me tomorrow. I'll post you a short tomorrow. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. And please consider to subscribing to my channel so you can hit that little subscribe button. That motivates me when I see people subscribing because it tells me that you enjoy my content and it's helping me get to that 100,000 subscriber mark, which I would really love to get to one day. And it means that you will see more of my content in your newsfeed too. So I don't just post this, I post about my African cichlid tanks, I do store tours, I collaborate with other content creators too, I go visit fish rooms, I really just have a diverse kind of range of aquarium vlog style videos so please consider doing that if you're enjoying it and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Okay it is about 10 30 p.m and I'm just about to render this video but I came downstairs and guess who I saw swimming around in the tower. It's definitely clearer than what it was before and there are some white cloud minnows in there. And I'm pretty sure I saw one of the polka dot mollies in there too. So you can see that little one just down there. They kind of just like float like in a sleepy way in there. It's kind of weird. What I'm going to do is in the morning, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a little short so that you guys can actually see it nice and clear. So if you go to my videos, you should be able to select shorts and then you'll be able to see it in there because I am definitely keen to upload some more shorts, but I'll do that in the morning so you can at least see what they look like. But there you go. That is a, a little special thing if you hung around to the end.